Welcome to the Five Rivers Podcast. For more information, head to fiveriverschurch.com. We now join our services already. Good morning. Good morning, Brian. Welcome to Five Rivers this morning. It's so great to see everybody. Those of you at home, thank you for joining us. I missed you last week. I really miss being here. It's good to be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Let's all stand together. And let's give thanks to the one who will never fail us. Let's give thanks to the one whose love endures forever. Amen. endures forever give praise to the Lord beside him there's no other let's give thanks give Give thanks thanks to the Lord his love endures forever give praise to the Lord beside him there's no other This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. He brought us from morning to dancing, from glory to glory. This is the day the Lord has made. So what are we waiting for? La 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 la, come on and praise the Lord. La 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 la, hear the word of the Lord. There's freedom for the captives. All good news to the poor, and beauty for the ashes. So what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. He brought us from morning to dancing, from glory to glory. This is the day the Lord has made. So what are we waiting for? La, 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 la. Come on and praise the Lord. La, 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 la. What are we waiting for? La, 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 la. Come on and praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. I live, I live to tell what the Lord has done. I live. To sing of my Savior's love, I live because He is 
risen. La 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 la. Oh, I live, I live to tell what the Lord has done. I live to sing of my Savior's love. I live because He is risen. La 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 la. Oh, I live, I live, I live to tell what the Lord has done. I live to sing of my Savior's love. I live because He is risen. La, 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 la. Oh, la, 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 la. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. He brought us from morning to dancing, from glory to glory, from morning to dancing, from glory to glory, from morning to dancing. This is the day the Lord has made. So what are we waiting for? La 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 la. Come on and praise the Lord. La 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 la. What are we waiting for? La 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 la. Come on and praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
in your promises my confidence is your faithfulness thy will rest in your promises my confidence is your faithfulness I will rest in your promises my confidence is your faithfulness and I will rest in your promises my confidence is your faithfulness faithful you are faithful forever you will be
and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why I trust him, that's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why I trust him, that's why I trust him, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why I trust him, that's why I trust in God, my Savior.
sometimes with everything that we're going through and sometimes the battles seem great but he is always there and his goodness is always running after us amen no matter how deep it feels his goodness is always running after us and in that in that in the trials and anything that we're going through just remember that rest on that he has not forgotten us he will not forsake us amen will always run after us. And all my life you have been faithful. Oh, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. running after me with my life laid down i surrender now i give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after Surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God oh I will sing of the 
goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. It's so great to see everybody this morning. Thank you for coming to Five Rivers. Tell you what, let, let's greet someone this morning. Let's shake a hand. Let's hug a neck in that goodness this morning. Send a text to someone as we move into our tithes and offering. Good morning, Five Rivers family. Registration deadlines for the upcoming men's and women's conferences are imminent. If you would like to still register for either of these conferences, please get more information at the hospitality desk. There will be a water baptism service on Sunday morning, October 27th. Please sign up at the hospitality desk if you would like to be baptized that day. Next Sunday, October 6th, there will be an informal clay shoot at the Ewing McDowell Farm in Rising Sun. If you would like more information about this, please contact Bruce Klein. You can also sign up at the hospitality desk to attend. And ladies, the annual evening around the fire pit at the home of Beth Klein is Sunday, October 13th from 6 to 8 p.m. This is always a fun evening of fellowship and snacks, and don't forget to bring your own chair. There is a display in the lobby for donations for the upcoming Family Fun Fest. Please take a tag and write down what you will provide and then put the items in the wheelbarrow when you bring them in. And we also need individually wrapped candy without Halloween decorations. Your generosity is always appreciated. Well, have a blessed week, family, and I'll see you next Sunday. One of our two annual candy times. Candy, candy, candy. We need candy, candy, candy. And I now need the code to my, anybody know the code to my iPhone? Oh, there we go. All right. Hey, good morning. good morning. Yeah, glad you're here to watch my struggles and my password for, I just like to watch other people struggle, don't you? I can tell. Nah. Hey, glad you're here. A couple things before we get into the word of the Lord today. Uh, many of you are probably very familiar with uh, Hurricane uh, Helene was a bad one. And Convoy of Hope is in multiple places, I'm sure. I, I did get an email recently that even before it made landfall, they were loading trucks. They were getting ready to head to Florida, but it's a lot bigger than Florida, uh, Georgia, Tennessee, the Carolinas. So if you would like to give to a very credible organization, uh, Convoy of Hope, uh, whenever there's disasters, who put that there? Oh, I did. Okay. All right. Uh, whenever there's disasters uh, and, and you want to you wanna give to that, to people that are on the scene with food, water, medical supplies, all in the, in the name and the love of Jesus, share the gospel as well when they have an opportunity. You can go to convoyofhope.org. You can just Google Convoy of Hope. And by now, right on their front page, you'll see uh, things related to Hurricane Helene. So I'd encourage you to do that. I know uh, I want to give from our family. As you, once again, we've seen the footage. It's devastating. And if that were us, we would want people contributing to 
uh, to help the helpers to get us back where, where we need to be. Hey, men's conference, you've heard. I, I want to give a special invitation from my son, Josiah, and myself. I regist- registered us this past week. So, yeah, come on, men, and uh, particularly men with teenage or young adult sons, come on. Uh, even if you go Friday, don't worry about the hotels that's on the registration site. I booked us in one. Actually, it was less money than some of the ones that, wow, who put that there? Oh, I did. Man, I feel so constricted today. I can't, I'm just going to stay right here, right? Uh, there's plenty of hotels in the area, so let's get registered and, and make it a good uh, men's conference, father-son time together for sure. Hey, I misspoke on something last week. I said last week, you don't want to miss the message in two weeks. Well, from last week, it was three weeks. It's two weeks from today. All right, so if you change your plans for Hawaii trip or anything, I'm so sorry. Um, See if you can get, you know, back over there to Hawaii and then get back in time to be here in two weeks. All right, what's that? October 8th, right? So come on. What's that? That's what I meant. Yeah. Whatever two Sundays is from right now, right? Oh, my goodness. Maybe we just need to get into the message. No, let's do one other thing beforehand. So Jeff Bacon, I know I'm often being uh, asked for updates. So, you know, when they roll into me, I'll be glad to pass them on to you. As you know, uh, several weeks ago, serious, serious motorcycle accident hit head on by another motorcycle. Still in the hospital, still in ICU, has been on a roller coaster ride. There are some signs of improvement. Uh, they were able to find and cauterize a place of internal bleeding. So uh, that's good news. They're trying to wean him off of a couple of things where he's having to have oxygen infused into his system um, to, to get the oxygen his body needs. They're trying, hopefully this week, maybe to wean him off of the ventilator, uh, hoping that the antibiotics, uh, they're having to change those, uh, serious pocket of infection in his lungs. So all of that to say, um, let's not stop praying for this guy and believe that God's going to walk in, Jesus will walk into that ICU, that it's a good week. Let us not grow weary in in praying for a brother and a family uh, that is in desperate need. So uh, we're hoping for a good week. All right, who's ready for a word from the Lord today? All right, here's today's message. Keep it moving. All right. Oh, good. Well, that's a, that's a praise report. Thank the Lord. So, so if not yet, we'll receive that as a prophetic. All right. Yeah. Who? Oh, yeah, well, we, I, haven't, I think he's doing a little better, but still struggling. So keep, keep Gerald Mahan in your prayers as well. So let's talk about keep it moving today. Um, wow. C- can you say that? Can you say it backwards? Yeah. Yeah. So, wow, some of you can, all of you can say it forward. Some of you can say it backwards. Some of you are still trying to figure out maybe how you could do that. All right. Well, here's what the wow is all about. Uh, today is the last installment of our church and culture series. Wow. Well, uh, yeah. Wow, you're clapping. You're just glad to be done with <laughs> Not sure how to interpret that, right? All right. Well, this is a vocal and expressive group today. All right. And through this, but through this series, uh, we've used the Apostle Paul's letters that were written to churches. And we've used these letters because of their real-time relevance. Just real-time relevance. Paul had to address problems in the church. Uh, Within the greater culture, a greater culture that was politically corrupt and morally bankrupt. Uh, Sound familiar? Right? That's why one of the reasons it has real-time relevance. Kind of like um, French author Jean-Baptiste Alphonse Carr who once said or wrote these words, the more things change, the more they stay the same. 
Paul was accustomed to challenges in the church and to the devil's opposing forces, wasn't he? The church today is dealing with things in a culture like Paul was very familiar with. If we could call him up for some counsel uh, on our smartphones, smart devices, he would probably start with a response, uh, something like my ministry coach has uh, responded to me, or at least initially from time to time when I've called him up with some challenges uh, that I've been facing in the past. I'll present it, and a number of times he said, yep, I've seen that demon before, right? Uh, maybe Paul would say the same thing, and because he's been there, done that, uh, lived in a familiar time as we're living in today. But I want us to remember this morning that we have done this series for two reasons, two primary reasons. Number one, to show that you can and you should stand firm in Christ no matter what. And secondly, so that you can and will be prepared and be ready for the return of Christ. Are you ready now? We are not promised that he will not return before this message is over, before our time together is over today. And the only way to stand firm in Christ and be ready for his return is to surrender to him as a, as a good teacher in your life. Yes, but it's for you to surrender to Jesus as the Lord of your life. Is he a good teacher? Well, yes, of course, but there's a whole lot more to Lord. You see, the problem with many people who want to call themselves Christians is that they only want to make or allow Jesus to be their Savior. Well, it's the same as a good teacher. Savior, he is that. But if you want to be saved, you have to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Did you know that's what the Bible says? In fact, here it is, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. It states this, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is, doesn't say Savior, doesn't say Teacher, doesn't say Son of God. If Jesus is Lord, right, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So, if you want to stand in Christ... And be saved so that you can share in the eternal glory that he has to offer you. Then he must be the Lord of your life. You must declare and behave in a way that Jesus is the ruler of your life and submit to his authority in all things. Well, you say, well, this was a responsive crew earlier, but it, it's gotten quiet in here. Uh, right? Come on now. No reasonable person should ever expect to receive what Jesus has to offer if they don't do what he says is Lord. And today we want to we emphasize keep it moving in the standing or in standing in Christ and being ready for his return. So we just want to pull a few things out of our passage today, which is going to be uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 through 18. It's going to take, take a few things and highlight them uh, out of this passage. Let's start with this idea of confidence in the Lord. One of the songs even talked about that today in our time of worship and singing. Confidence in the Lord. First, or excuse me, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Now, uh, before we read this, uh, Paul has already addressed this fallacy about the return of Christ, right? And he's... Um, given some other instructions and encouragement, and then that leads up to this. And it says, as for other matters, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored, just as it was with you, and pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil people, for not everyone has faith. If you've read this, you know that at the beginning of the letter, or read this letter, you know that at the beginning, Paul has stated that he was thankful for the Thessalonian believers, and he prayed for them. 
Now, here at the end of this letter, he requests prayer from them. And then he even gives directions on how to pray. Paul requests prayer for his work, doesn't he? He requests prayer that, that the gospel train that he's responsible for, that the gospel train that he's conducting, will, will keep on moving. Paul requests prayer for the gospel's advance through his ministry and for deliverance from wicked opponents. He's asking, hey, please pray that, that the word of the Lord, pray that, that the gospel would speed ahead and preferably with unhindered progress. Pray that, that God's word will be honored by people who acknowledge its truth and embrace God's offer of salvation. And the last part of Paul's prayer request is because he recognizes, come on, we just read it, not everyone, not everyone embraces the gospel. Not everyone embraces it with faith. In fact, Paul had experienced on a number of occasions rejection and, and even experienced in times that the, a presentation of the gospel was met with violent hostility. But he now continues with further admonishment. We pick up in verses 3 through 5. But the Lord is faithful. And he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. We have, and here's where uh, what we're highlighting comes from directly, we have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do, to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. So Paul gives some final words of comfort to believers. Interestingly, Paul ends verse 2 recognizing uh, the lack of faith of unbelievers, but now in contrast, emphasizing God's faithfulness at the beginning of verse 3. So Paul, Paul's list here around confidence in the Lord, Paul, Paul lists a threefold provision from the Lord. God is faithful. God will strengthen you. And God will protect you from the evil one. Well, that should increase anyone's confidence in the Lord. Now, you've probably experienced as I have. Satan is always trying to destroy the faith of believers, but God's faithfulness gives assurance that the evil one will not succeed. So the Thessalonians and all believers will overcome by responding appropriately to the gospel and to the instructions of the Lord. Where does all of this come from? Confidence in the Lord is where it comes from. That's, that's what we're highlighting out of verse 4. Confidence in the Lord. In verse 4, Paul stated, We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things that we command. Now, Paul has already referenced God's faithfulness. He has referenced God's strengthening. He's referenced God's protection. This provides a confidence in the Lord for Paul. It's, listen, Paul knows God's going to do his part. Maybe not in his way, in his timing, but he is confident God's going to do his part. But get this, we have a part in God's part. See, a part of Paul's confidence in the Lord is that they, and now we, would continue to do the things. In other words, keep, keep the things moving that they were commanded. And things that they were what? Oh, that was weak. And the things that they were what? Commanded. Yeah, I find that a very interesting word. He didn't say in the things that were sheepishly suggested. You know, Paul, Paul didn't say, well, you, know, um, you, know, we, we, you know, we came to you and you weren't doing so great and you, you know, you're off thinking this and believing that and subjecting yourself to this. So we thought, you know, we, uh, we had some Jesus ideas, that, some Jesus thoughts that, you know, we, we thought maybe we'd, you know, we'd share them with you, and, you know, he's kind of hoping that, uh, 
you know, maybe they'd help you out, help you out a little bit, and um, and you know that that you, you would take some of these thoughts and and you know maybe maybe you know give you some strength or you know you know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to say, right? No, Paul made it clear he commanded. We commanded you because you were a mess. You were buying into falsehoods. You get into wandering aimlessly. You've been delivered from the strongholds of the world, and you needed, to be, you needed to be instructed. We commanded you, not suggested. So now here's what you do. Put your confidence in the Lord. Make it happen. Keep it moving. All right? You see the difference there? I think I'm going to go with number two. Now, one of the best ways to keep it moving is the second thing that we want to highlight today that comes out of this uh, next portion of the chapter. Keep doing good. Keep doing good. Now, the next section is an interesting inclusion uh, in this letter. It's actually, it's a warning against idleness. Oh, boy, here we go. So we're going to pick up here verses 6 through 15. 2 Thessalonians 3, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we suggest to you... Uh, we, uh, no, we command you, right, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us. For you yourselves, you know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone else's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked day and night laboring and toiling so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. We hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people... We're thinking it would be best. No. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down. In other words, go back to work. All right? To settle down and earn the food they eat. As for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. Take special note of anyone who does not obey our instruction in this letter. Do not associate with them in order that they may feel ashamed. You do not regard, yet do not regard them as an enemy, but warn them as you would a fellow believer. So once again, an interesting inclusion here. Paul addresses this problem that the church is having with idlers, idle people. And Paul instructs the Thessalonian community to exercise discipline on those who can, but they're refusing to, to go to work. Now, although, and I get it, there's nothing in 1st or 2nd Thessalonians that explicitly links idleness with confusion about the end times, which is the major theme here. He's addressing the return of Christ and some confusion they had. There's nothing that explicitly links idleness with confusion about the end times, but many think that the Thessalonians just stopped working because, you know, they're waiting on the return of the Lord, and that's their message, Right? There are others that believe the problem was merely just one of lazy Christians exploiting the charity of wealthier Christians and, and using their time to meddle in the affairs of others. Now, whatever the cause of idleness here, Paul's patience with them had evidently run out. I <laughs> think it's pretty strong language that we just read, right? He strongly commands the community as a whole to discipline by disassociation from those who could be working, but they're depending on others for a living. Now keep in mind that idleness, or understand this, that idleness in this passage, it carries with it the idea of being undisciplined. Hey, these people are undisciplined. Also, the idea that they're just irresponsible and, and, and they're disorderly and they're disrupting the body of Christ. Paul points out that they've been taught better. They know better. 
And, and he modeled, he even modeled, he says, hey, we modeled for you. We, we took on a heavy workload in addition to ministry responsibilities so that he and his colleagues would not be a financial burden on those they're bringing the gospel to. We read that in verses 8 and 9. And, and this is where we get the, now the biblical principle, if you don't work, you don't eat. That's verse 10. And then verse 11 points out that some were not busy at work. They just become busy bodies. Point to someone if you know, no, 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 all right, maybe. <laughs> Point to someone that you know is going to go to work tomorrow. All right, that, maybe that's a, <laughs> all right. Nobody's going to be left out there that we trust, right? Or go to school. For some of you, school is your work, right? So what is a busybody? A busybody is just someone that exploits their free time, and not only that, but they, they like to meddle in the affairs of others. See, they got time for all this stuff, Right? And in verse 12, we've already touched on it, Paul basically says, get back to work. Work quietly and stop being a nuisance in the community of Christ. And this leads to our second point that comes out of uh, the next verse. Keep doing good. Paul has given instructions to idlers. Now he gives instructions to the church community. And the church community as a whole, particularly those who have resources and and may have been exploited by the idol, he's aware that they might grow weary. They've grown weary in, in doing this. So Paul calls on them, don't do that. Don't grow weary. Listen, keep being charitable. Keep doing good, of course, to those who are in need and, and they're deserving of some help. Because there's that too. There's a lot of people that need our help. We just talked about earlier with, with, the, um, with the, the hurricane and, and residual effects. Uh, there's some folks that need our help, and I want to help. Uh, there's folks in, in our church body and in our community that need help. That's why we, we do the pantry now at Holly Hall. We, we want to keep doing good and helping those who are in need. Now, verse 13 contains this well-known concept from the, from the Bible, don't grow weary in well-doing or in doing good. And, and this morning, we, we see here, yes, this is the immediate context of this principle. But we can pull this biblical principle from here. We can extract it from this context and implement it in many other contexts, right? And the church is urged to never tire of doing what is right, doing what is good. See, because to, to tire, when Paul writes this here, to tire or, or grow weary, it implies the, the possibility of losing heart or, or being, giving in to disappointment and, and giving in to struggles. Now listen, I get it, and, and we all have people or situations, they're just draining, aren't they? And um, maybe we need to re-up, right? Re-strengthen and, and re- re-evaluate and recalibrate, because we do have those times in doing good, you're like, well, what's the use? Is it doing any good? And, and exhortations, exhortations to persevere are very common in Paul's writings, they're all over the place. We, 1 Corinthians, Philippians, even in the first letter to the Thessalonians, he's doing this. Here's one example that comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So if you serve in some capacity, in the church, keep doing good. If you're involved in, in one of our community ministries, where you go into a school, Holly Hall or Abbey Manor, the nursing home, and you wonder, is that kid listening? You know, or this individual sleeps through every meeting. Is, are we doing any good here? Keep doing that. Let, let God handle the results. If, if you're faithful with the Lord's tithes in your offerings, keep being faithful. If you're praying for and you're trying to reach a family member, don't grow weary. If you're, if you're struggling with something, keep trusting God. If, if, you're like, if you think, I'm just surrounded by darkness, keep the light of Jesus burning in your heart. 
All right? If, if you're hurting in your heart, keep seeking God's healing. If, if you feel alone, keep believing God is with you. If whatever, keep doing good. It'll pay off. Here's the third thing that we're going to pull from our passage today. It's simply this. The Lord's peace and grace be with you. The Lord's peace and grace be with you. Look what Paul closes his letter with. It's, it's a prayer. It's, it's, a, it's a wish prayer. It's, it's a declaration. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, he writes these words. Now. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand, which is the distinguishing mark in all my letters. This is how I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Wow. And I can say that backwards. Wow, right? You know, I mentioned earlier to be saved. To be saved, you need to make Jesus the Lord of your life. But don't miss the amazing benefits that accompany his lordship. There's just three out of a mountain range of benefits in this passage. Here's, here's something that accompanies you making Jesus the Lord of your life. Peace. How many of you are living and moving and having your being every day of your life in the peace of Christ? Here's a second benefit that accompanies. God is with you. You make him the Lord of your life. You have this sense of the presence of God being with you. And the third thing, it's, it's the grace of Jesus. Is there anyone here that doesn't need the grace of Jesus? You're like, no. I mean, I mean, th this list, oh, but these just sound horrible, don't they? This is just awful stuff. I got to surrender my life to Jesus, and, and I get peace. I get God being with me. I, I get the grace of Jesus. This is horrible. It just couldn't possibly get any worse. Now, obviously, in saying that, I'm being foolishly facetious. But you know one of the reasons the devil is so successful in, in keeping some from, from these good things is because he, he stops at this, that, that if you surrender your life to the lordship, the authority, not just savior, not just good teacher, that if you surrender your life to the authority, to the lordship of Jesus, you have to give up being your own God. Boom, he stops right there. Because he knows that in our fallenness, in our brokenness, in our flesh, in our sinfulness, we, we think we want to be our own God. And anything other than that could, is just horrible. We can't allow that. No, I've got to be the authority and the ruler of my life. And, 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 but if I give it to Jesus, I've got to stop being my own God. Uh, yeah. Have you ever noticed... And reflecting back that when you were the ruler of the universe, things just weren't that great. <laughs> right? Just, just in a moment of honesty there, just saying, yeah, yeah, you got to give up you being your own God. But I'm going to tell you, and the Lord tells you, God will tell you what the devil won't. You also give up his peace. You, get, you, you don't get it. You also have to let go and, and surrender of God being with you and have, having a sense that no matter what, he's with me. You, you got to give that up too, all right? It goes with giving up Jesus being the Lord of your life. And, and, and you got to give up the grace that Jesus provides. So that great hymn of the church, Amazing Grace, that's not for you. You can't, you can't have it. It accompanies lordship, the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and you know what is even worse for some? 
they, just, they become content with the devil's counterfeits in place of what accompanies Christ's authority. And then even worse than that, they're numb to it, don't even realize what, the, what they're surrendering, what they're giving up. They don't even know how to function in God's presence, in the grace of Jesus, and all the good things that accompany making him the Lord of your life. But let's consider Paul's wish prayer here for believers now. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace. And I, and I love how he, he fills in any gaps here. At all times. And, and in every way, at all times, in every way. The Lord be with you all. May the Lord be with you all. May the Lord himself of peace give you his peace at all times in every way. So in these last three verses here, there's an interesting transition that takes place. Paul now transitions from command to exhortation and then to a prayer again, doesn't he? And, and his prayers recognize that, that ultimately it is God and God alone who, who can, can bring about this compliance with what is asked of believers. You can't do it on your own. With, without the Lord's help, our efforts will get us nowhere. That's why our confidence is in the Lord, not confidence is in ourselves. Right? Without the Lord's help, our efforts will get us nowhere. And, and, and this is the thought behind the petition that he's making in this passage. Hear me today, beloved. Only the, the Lord of peace can make harmony among believers with himself and one another a reality. Yes, this is first and foremost peace with God, but it provides grounds for believers to be at peace with one another and to live in the peace of the Lord. And when and what is this peace of the Lord for? All times. In every way. You know, all times here, when he prays that, he's asking that there be no break in the flow of the peace of Christ. In other words, no matter what's going on in your life, things come and go, you're up, you're down, you're in, you're out, but let there be no break in the flow of the peace of the Lord Jesus into you and your, or to you and into your life. And when he says, and when he prays and he asks God that not only at all times but in every way, he's asking that the prevalence of peace continue no matter what the outward circumstances. Seasons come and go, circumstances rise, circumstances fall, and, and there's something going on all the, all the time, but, but he's praying this prevalence of peace, that it would continue no matter what's going on. And then when we understand that, we understand peace is not the absence of conflict, it's something greater in the midst of conflict. He says, the Lord be with you all. The Lord be with you all. It requests what was previously guaranteed to Christ followers. He's written about it. Don't you love the promise, Hebrews 13, 5? That Jesus will never leave you or forsake you. And he provides this assurance. What an assurance. Paul ends this letter with the great and encouraging pronouncement. The grace of of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. He doesn't want anyone to miss out on what the Lord offers. No one is excluded from Paul's prayer and good wishes. Jesus is our Lord of peace and grace. He has reconciled Christians to God, and by His grace... You can now be at peace with your Creator, with your Savior, with your Lord the one that you've surrendered all authority to. And you know what I appreciate here? All, anywhere in Paul's writings, but we're here in particular, all of this is in the realm of, of the realities and the difficulties of life. 
Paul never once, not in Thessalonians, not in any of his letters that we've used in this series, not any of what's known as pastoral letters, not in any of his writings, Paul never once wanders off into some pipe dream fantasy that you can escape the woes of this world into this utopic Never once does he wander off in some pipe dream fantasy, but he also never veers off from, from there is something greater. There is something greater than all of this stuff that we have to deal with. You want to know what it is? It's God's peace. There is something greater than our circumstance, and that is God is with us through it all. There is something greater than the trials and the turmoil of this life. It's the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And see, this is, this is how we can keep it moving. In standing firm in Christ and being ready for His return. Are you standing firm today? I know this. There's only one way that I know to, to stand firm with all that's going on in life and in the world today. It's to be in Christ. Make Him the Lord of my life. And then I get what all that accompanies that. Now I'm strengthened to stand firm. There, there's only one way that, that I know to be, to be prepared for the return of Christ when it happens and that is to make Jesus the Lord of my life now where are you today with that is Jesus just your savior in your mind just someone that you go to from time to time on Sunday mornings to get some good teachings from, from what the Lord has to say oh no if you want to be saved He's got to be the Lord of your life. The authority. And then you get all that accompanies that. You know, there's a... I'm searching for a word. So for lack of a better word, we'll just use the word chance. There's a good chance... See, this is not my notes. That's why I make manuscripts. I think this through. Just bear with me, right? Now, there's a good chance that, that the unsettledness in your life is in direct proportion to the amount you've made Jesus the Lord of your life. Let me preach that to myself. Huh? Maybe it'll take some traction. Let me get my, get my camera up here. And... So, Robert, the amount of unsettledness in your life is evidence of the lack of the Lordship of Jesus in your life. Ah. What you're saying is, I'm unsettled in this area, in that area, in that area, because I, I don't have confidence in the Lord, because I haven't made Him the Lord of that area of my life, right? And, and you know, here's something interesting with a lot of so-called Christians, so-called believers today. A lot of them, if they think about it, may, may give Jesus lordship in a particular area. But we have so many so-called Christians that don't even think about making this, that, or the third area an area where they place confidence in the Lord in. It doesn't even cross their minds. They, just, they, they go to 
this counsel, that medication, uh, anxiety, this, that, the third, the fourth, uh, chase after all of these other things. And it, it doesn't even cross their thinking pattern as a matter of comparison. Well, maybe I need to trust in the Lord in this. I need to put my confidence in the Lord. So that leaves you unsettled. It leaves you uncertain. It leaves you in a place that, that's outside of the perimeters of placing confidence in the Lord. And then, you know, there's that group, you know, I've done this, I've done that, I'm trying to be faithful, I'm trying to do good, I see it going nowhere, let's just do something else. And they stop doing good. Jesus the Lord of your life today is your confidence in the Lord as it should be are, are you continuing to do good and sometimes our receivers are broken God has storehouses of peace to, to give you what does it say we just read it to make available to you at all times in every way. But we got all these ways. We got all these times. It, it's, we've stepped out of the parameters that God provides His peace and grace in. We have a lot of unsettled believers in the church because. It, our receivers break from time to time. How about a receiver just in his grace? Can I be honest with you about something? There's times in my life as, as a man, as, as a believer, as a husband, as a father, as, as a pastor. It's like, God, do I get more right or wrong? I just need to receive his grace. We still fall short of the glory of God from time to time, don't we? God has storehouses of grace that He wants you to have at all times and in every, every way. Would you stand with me in the house of the Lord today? Jesus is Savior, yes. Jesus is the Son of God. Yes, He is. Jesus is one who taught with authority like no one else, absolutely. Jesus is the King of Kings. Jesus is the Good Shepherd. Jesus is the Rose of Sharon. Jesus is the Lily of the Valley. Jesus is Jehovah. He is Emmanuel. He's God with us. He's yes, 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 yes. But is He the Lord, the one with all authority in your life? Is your confidence in the Lord as it should be? Are you continuing to do good? Are you receiving His peace at all times in every way? Are you receiving His grace? I wonder if there's anyone here today. You know what, Lord, I've, I, I've, or Jesus, I've made you the Lord over a lot of my area, even 90%. Guess what? He's coming after the 10 today. Well, Lord, I've given you 99, but I just want to hold on to this one thing. Nope. That's not Lordship. Lord is the whole... What was our word we, last week? The whole shebang, right? Is he the Lord of your life? I hope so. Are you putting confidence in the Lord like you should? Or, Lord, I, I, I trust you in this and this and this, but let me handle this. Don't do that. Is your confidence in the Lord as it should be? And I, I wonder if there's anyone here, you, just, you, you would, in a moment of honesty, I'm unsettled, I need his peace. I need his peace. I have it some of the time, I have it in some things, but not all of the time and everything, I need his peace. And I don't know about you, sign me up for this one. I need to receive his grace today. 
you need to receive the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ today. So, just a few questions for us to consider. If there's anything you need to surrender to the Lord, I want to open these altars right now as Brian plays and sing something if he, if, as, if he likes. But let him be the Lord of your life. It'll help you stand firm today and be prepared for the return. Amen. The altars are open. The times of prayer is open. Whether you come down or not, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I know in my life a lot of stops and starts and stops and starts and starts and stops and stops and starts and starts and stops. But you're saying, hey, I need you to keep it moving. I need you to keep it moving and, and allowing me to be the Lord of your life. I need you to keep it moving and, and placing confidence in me. I need you to keep it moving and, and, and doing good. I, I need you to keep it moving by receiving my peace at all times in every way. I need you to keep it moving by receiving the grace that I have for you. Come on, church. I, I just feel this in my spirit today. You need to let the Holy Spirit fix your receiver. Some of you are just, you're not opening yourself up. You're not receiving his peace at all times in every way. You're, you're not receiving his grace in the way that he wants to pour it into your heart, into your life. Come on. Are there, who needs to receive today? I, I need to receive more of who he is into the fullness of who I am. Come on, is there more? I need to receive. I need to receive. I, I'm, I'm drained. I'm out of strength. I can't do it anymore. I re- I, I, there's unsettledness. I want to receive his peace. Come on, anyone else? Don't miss out. like having the money going to a restaurant and leaving hungry they, they get everything you need there you don't have to leave hungry you don't have to miss out the Lord is here today there's an abundance of of his peace if you'll just receive it there's an abundance of his grace if you'll just receive it come on all over this place Brian let's let's sing something let's open our hearts to the Lord let's receive what he has today let's receive his lordship Let's receive his goodness. Let's receive his confidence. Let's receive his peace. Let's receive his grace.
that today God is faithful he is faithful 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 listen stay and pray as long as you like whether at the altar in your pew doesn't matter if you feel uh, released please leave quietly in reverence to those that that are crying out to God and experiencing his faithfulness but go in the assurance today God is faithful hey keep it moving Oh, your mercy never fails.